So I'm going to talk about uh, prototyping. And let me be clear, I'll be starting with uh, what a prototype is and how and who should make them. And also I will be discussing best ways uh, how to build prototypes. And because I'm, it's the last session uh, and I'm probably everybody's quite tired, especially with those nice chairs, I want to see some hands. Who ever created a mobile application? Yeah. And who ever made a prototype? What are you doing here? <laughs> cool. OK. Great audience. So my name is Wiebe Elsinga. And I know it's a difficult name. I'm from the Niederlanden. And I work for a, com a small company in the Netherlands, and we make mobile applications for Android and, yeah, some stuff for Apple as well. But, and I'm also a co-founder of the Dutch Android User Group, and we try to elevate the, tech, the uh, more technical skills of Android developers uh, within Holland. But I'm not going to talk about me. What I do want to talk about is what a prototype is. And it sounds like an easy question, right? What is a prototype? Well, for me, it wasn't. It took me a while to figure out what a prototype really is, and I came up with a good definition. I think it's a uh, early version of an ID, or even better yet, a testable one. So, a good way to test the definition is by way of giving some examples. So. What are these called? Yeah, I'm not giving, giving away any prices, by the way. And I'm not going to throw chocolates. Oh, that was a weird guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is a, a good way of, of a, a new way of transport. But, um, and it was a novel idea, but it already was a finished product when, you, when it came out. And also, I'm sorry to say, but it was a revelation when the iPhone came out, right? Yeah, not everybody's quiet. But yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still, I'm an Apple fan as well. Ooh. Um, but when it was introduced to the pub public, it already was mass produced. So this isn't, this isn't typically a prototype. And neither is this. And you can buy this, really. It's eight euros, and it protects you when you eat noodles. So, but this is, this is, and I hope to say, I'm, I'm going to pronounce his name, Pranav. And in 2009, he was watching a movie and he saw some cool technique, technique and he wanted to try out if he could make it uh, on his own. And he uh, bought some supplies at the Radio Shack and uh, tried to figure out if the technique is possible in real life. Uh, did you know which movie he saw? Minority. Yeah, that's true. And he succeeded, by the way. Uh, there's a um, working, it's, it's not finished yet, but it's a working device which uh, mimics the, the gestures you, you put in, in, in the air. So he took his idea and made a visualization of what he thought would be a, a good way of making the project with a minimal effort. And can somebody explain this prototype? Ah, oh, come on. Close. It was the first prototype of the iPod. <coughs> no, but seriously, this raises the question, why should we use prototypes, right? What, what's in it for us as, as developer or as uh, uh, an, uh, a creator of IDs? So basically, a prototype should answer some questions from your stakeholders or your customers or the end users you'll be making the uh, application for. And probably will generate new ones as well. And also, it's, uh, a prototype is a good way to explore the different alternatives or compare the different alternatives. For instance, using a, how the best way to use a stylus. And. Um, when building an, an application, it's probably a good idea to know if the application will fail early 
and cheaply because it's very expensive if the app, if the the application is already built or in its final stage. Great protection, by the way. Yeah, it's in Holland, by the way. Sorry, but. Let's look at some examples of some bad applications for mobile. Do I really want to share my location with sex offenders? So probably isn't the best way to do this. And also, if I want to make a donation, what I'm giving money for? For or against prostate cancer? These are real life examples of a bad application. So to summarize, a prototype is a, is a visualization of an idea which you can share to your stakeholders, not only with the end user, but also with a developer or with a friend or even your mom. And basically, you have to fake it till you make it. Again, who's this? Urkel, yeah, it was the first nerd in a television show. This raises a question, a question, who is responsible and who will make the uh, prototype? I had a, I think it was two weeks ago, I had an online discussion with uh, different designers and um, they thought they were responsible for the design, right? Normally you have an interaction designer, a visual designer, maybe it's one per person, and he creates the concept, he creates the screens, and, and basically that's it. But me, as a developer, I also need to build the application. For, so for me, being part of the process of making a prototype is as important as for the designer. But also the customer. I can create as a uh, designer the most awesome application, but if the user isn't uh, using the application, what's the use? So, I hear us, what makes a good prototype? Well, there's just four things you need to remember. It should be quick and cheap to make, uh, with a minimal effort, and in my case, I think it should be testable as well. So that's easy, right? So how do we create a prototype? First of all, let me, um, uh, there are two types of prototype. Uh, the experiential one, I hope I pronounce it well. It's more of a free format where you don't have a goal or something to solve. You have no boundaries and just go nuts. And you have the more technical one where you want to solve a problem or you want to uh, make a, 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 a product of an idea you've got. And I will be more focusing on the technical one. And also I want to ask you where exactly in the development process a prototype should be built. Everybody's quiet, come on. Yeah, you don't need to raise your hand. If yeah, there was a, a discussion I had with a colleague and he said, okay, the prototype should be in the beginning phase uh, of your uh, uh, project, uh, maybe in the beginning of one or two sprints, but it should be evolving within your project. And sure, in the beginning, the prototype is more important than in the end, but your application grows. The customer says, okay, maybe I want some, some new features as well. So why don't you involve your prototype as well? So, first of all, we need to plan something, right? We have, the, we have to define user stories. User stories mainly is a high level of definition of a requirement of functionality. And some examples would be, uh, I want to see where I am on, on my map. I want to see my location. I want to share information to my friends. And if you identify these uh, functional blocks or these tasks, uh, you have a, a high level idea of what the application should be doing. And then you can create a user flow. A user flow gives a good overview of how the user stories will interact with each other, gives you a uh, more understanding of the whole application. 
And then the fun part, you can sketch uh, rough interface screens. Don't go mad. Don't do high fidelity uh, screen uh, sketches, but stick to the, the main user stories and try to visualize the ID on the different screens. And then we're already, uh, we can build the, app, the prototype, not the application, the prototype. And there are some tools you can use. Uh, mo uh, um, a common one is using a stencil. You can buy one for, I think, 20 euros on uistencils.com. And uh, yeah, you can, you can make your prototype like this, but it's, it, it gives you high fidelity, but if you do something wrong, if you draw a line uh, too long, you need to start over again. So it's a lot of work. And um, the guy who was throwing the chocolates, he told us about a, uh, using uh, paper prototypes, right? Um, just watch. Yeah, but now I have an application with 18 screens. How long does the movie will take? Right? It, 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 it gives a better idea of the interaction the application should be doing, but it's really time consuming. So probably isn't the best tool to use. Maybe for you, but for me, I find it very time consuming. By the way, this is the Expedia application prototype. Uh, most common use are uh, templates, templates for Photoshop, Fireworks. Um, for me as a developer, I'm not very handy with Photoshop, so it took me a while to figure out how to make good prototype screens. Uh, but it's a more real life way of making your screens look like the end product. And especially you can project the different screens on your device, which gives the customer a good way of uh, inter between the different screens as well. But I'm lazy. I want to do something that is fast, which can be tested as well, and which I probably know. And we use, I'm not selling Kinotopia, by the way, but... We use Kinotopia, and Kinotopia is a, a common library for uh, PowerPoint and Keynote, and it has predefined components for uh, Android, uh, web, iOS as well. And I can create my presentation with, with these components, but the difference is, and I hope, by the way, this is an iPod, I'm sorry, of an iPad, I'm sorry. But I can run this on an actual device. It gives me a great uh, idea of if the button is, uh, should be big enough, it's the correct place. It gives me more, more of an interaction. And basically, it's just a clickable PDF which runs on your application, which is generated by PowerPoint, right? Um, the reason why this is on an iPad, they're still in the final phase of making the Android application. But if you contact me on Google+, I can send you the, uh, the, the runnable APK which you can run your uh, keynote on. It probably won't be happy that I'm doing this. Um, but there's also a, uh, you can make your prototype in the cloud. There are numerous services for that. The advantage of this is that you can share your prototype with your customer who mostly isn't on site where you create your awesome prototype. Um, but again, there are some costs and um, you need to learn the, the specific project, uh, yeah, product. And I'm not saying these are the ways to go. There are numerous, numerous uh, different tools. Uh, Balsamic is a common is a common use, especially for the iOS developer, uh, the creators, designers, user experience designers. And it all depends on your needs. What you think is most common uh, use within your company or the knowledge you already got. Um, 
Yeah. Let me grab a drink. So I mentioned uh, testing earlier. And in my opinion, you should test several prototypes you make. I know you, as a designer or as a developer, you are focused on just one cool, awesome app, but try to, uh, let's say the menu or the navigation. Uh, common use is the navigation bar or the action bar, but try to create one with a fly-in menu. <coughs> and uh, maybe the customer likes uh, that prototype, but always be true to your user story, in this case, holding the liquid. But don't be afraid to go bold out with different kind of prototypes. And of course, uh, don't be afraid of feedback. Um, ask your mom what she thinks of the application. Ask your girlfriend, wife, or whoever you want to ask. But always target your uh, audience with uh, whose application will be using. I think that's the most important one. So you make your application, of your, you make your prototype, you test it some, and then you need to refine it. Just discuss your uh, prototype with customer or the stakeholders. By the way, which one of these three is the customer? Come on. No. Yeah, and the creative guy? Yeah, always funny that everybody picks the same ones. Um, but discuss your um, uh, prototype and maybe the user says, but I, hey, that wasn't the idea of, that wasn't the user story I was thinking about. Maybe he gets new ideas, maybe uh, he wants to elaborate. And use those findings from the discussion to uh, refine your prototype, make it even better for your customer or the stakeholder. Uh, and then test again, redefine it again, and test it again, and go on till your customer or your stakeholder is happy. And finally, I love this picture, by the way. <laughs> Can't imagine my brother is like this, but. Um, share, share your uh, uh, prototype with whoever you want to share it with. Don't be afraid to expose your application <laughs> Uh, I know there are some some uh, boundaries of security, maybe, or uh, you don't want everybody to know what cool application you're going to build. But try to share it and uh, listen to the different points of views those people uh, have. And just play with. Don't bother with writing a whole lot of specif specifications. Just play with it. Just create your prototype, run it, test it. So basically, I, did, I talked to you about planning, building, testing, refine, and sharing it. And basically, these are the common steps you can use to make your prototype. And I know we're at the end of, of DroidCon, and I know you have a lot of presentation you heard. And forget everything I have to say, and just remember a picture is worth a thousand words, and a prototype is worth a thousand pictures. And basically, that's it.